Are there any spoilers in it? I don't think there would be too much. I don't think there would be too much, but you know, color me interested. Uh, this is arguably one of my favorite games of all time. Very curious to hear a bit more from the behind the scenes, even though we did get what felt like a little bit of this behind the scenes, even when Advent Children uh, was in theaters. It felt like we got something like this that was going into, you know, FF7 and anticipation of rebirth. Let me just fire this up and this just start seeing what they say about stuff.原作の Need more detail. More detail. Uh, the, 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 uh, all, all of these people are the goats. All are the goats. The sound director, the music supervisor, and the composer for this game, the goats. Holy shit. その絵に当ててみて、ゲームに入れてみて、どういうふうに機能してるかっていうところをすごくやっぱり注意して作りましたね。様々な村や町とか、あとフィールド、自然ですね。え、そういったあの様々な要素があってこそ、あのファイナル
今回探求の要素が多々そこに含まれたって私自身も思ってる以上によりその探索要素って非常にたくさんギュッと詰め込まれていていわゆるクエストやもしくはこうある種こう谷をどんどんたどっていくと実は発見しづらいこうあのルートがあってそこの奥にはしっかりとしたこう。If there's one thing I do hope is that、um, a, a lot of the stuff that was explorable in this game, the ex exploration in this game is really good. A lot of it was, I'd say, scripted exploration. It's a hard way of describing it, where you clearly see that there's like a path and another, pla another path, and you're like, okay, I missed something. I know I missed something. Let me just go back and look at the map. Yeah, there's something over there. I'll just go over there.、Uh, I, I hope that there's like a moment in the follow up game in the future where there's like mist shit. Where you could, you could, from like, I don't know, a, a aerial skybox view of the, of the land, plan on going to one place and then you just truly have like, what the hell's in that cave?、Uh, what could be in there?、Uh, what's on that island? Don't know about that. And there wouldn't be a very much like, okay, so here is this region, fulfill all the objectives in the region. At times, I kind of wish that, you know, you could, you could just find shit and it could be missable. I don't need that everywhere. It would just be nice, similar in the OG FF7, to come across like, I'm in the Northern Crater. What the hell is this house doing up here? And I can't get to it? Wait a minute, I can actually land up here now with an airship? Who the hell is this guy? And that's where the,、uh, the Chocobo Sage is, you know? It was kind of stuff like that, where you, like, you don't really get that information unless it's like one NPC that tells you about it. And that made that really fun in the old game. There's already so much stuff to explore in this game. You know? I feel like they can almost like save some of it to not have to be all a part of like、uh, the region intel. So, what's funny is that this seemed like this was complete bullshit when, the,、uh, when they were promoting this game. I'm like, 100 hours is bullshit. This is not how many, th this is not how long this game is going to be. This is bullshit.、Um, so, they weren't lying. In fact, it wasn't 100 hours. It was, for me, it was 130. <laughs> And I, I felt like I exhausted most things. I did about 99% of the game. No, no, no. It, it was actually more. <laughs> it was even more. Yeah, it's because it's where the most rewards come from. Right? Everything siphons you back to the Golden Saucer in the old game. Chocobo racing, you know, all the mini games. Oh, that's a good call. That is actually a really good call. I love the Golden Saucer in this game, dude. No basketball. Yeah. No arm wrestling, no basketball. So, this is the first time I've been in the game. I'm going to be able to do it. 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 The music was so good. The fact that they had like a main street, a main street electrical parade version of the Golden Saucer theme, that shit blew my mind. I was like, so you just want us to feel like we're in Disneyland more than ever. そういう仕組みを入れてこう何でしょう箱庭感をこう演出しています。
ライティングであのゴールドソーサー作る上であの表現したかったのは原作でも多少感じられる部分はあったと思うんですけど、まあ、エントランスあたりのちょっと寂しい雰囲気だったりとか、まあ、そこから中に入った時のにぎやかな感じとか、まあ、そういった部分をライティングであの表現できたかなと思っています、まあ、ゴールドソーサーはおそらくこう、まあ、ユーザーが一番楽しみに。<laughs> yeah, Gold Saucer lighting was cool because it was like constrained. It was more baked. <laughs> This goddamn minigame. This one was really fun. Chocobo Racing was incredible. This game, I, ended up, I didn't like that game at first. I ended up really liking it. Red 13, um, Rocket League was okay. Not a huge fan of this minigame. I like this one a lot. I think I liked like 85% of the minigames in the game a lot. Um, about only a couple of them that I think weren't that great. The Dolphin minigame was mad fun. Once you get used to it. And then, Jesus, dude, the goat. At, at one point, I was like wanting to get from place to place. I was like pulling up into a new town, and I was all like, so where are these Queen's Blood players at, huh? Like, like I'm rolling into an arcade looking for competition. I'm like, oh, these bitches think they hot, huh? <laughs> Yes, there was. Certainly was. グレーヘムに関してもあのまずはその土地の成り立ち歴史というものをまあオリジナルを見たときに本当に山の形とかあの特徴的なんですけどもそれがどうやってあのその形になったのかとかまあそういった考察を最初にしました。ま、デザイン God, dude, that beginning of the game is so incredible. That shit's incredible. けど、ちょっと色味が進んでいるというか、まあそういう空気感を表現できたかなと思っています。シンラーの開発の影響があのグルヘムは大きいので、もうそのあたりをオリジナルよりもあの人目で分かるようなあのデザインの生活感も見えるような形でデザインに入れていったというところであのシンラの関係性っていうのをもっと深くあの表現できていると思いますそうですねニフルの曲やっぱりそのあの悲しげなあの曲はすごく心に残ります
Cool. That's what I felt like. This image, when you first like, when you first get your blue chicken, and you're like, are you just gonna let me jump off this? And you float the whole way down. You're like, oh my god, you're really gonna let me do this. I think it was uh, technically green. えっと、yeah, I dude, Sunset Cosmo, best co dude. I almost wish that the game allowed us to change the time of the day because I just, I adored like the sunset scapes of environments and towns. I loved it, man. And it kind of bummed me out when that doesn't change at some point in the game and it's just like noon at all times. It's like peak sunlight. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I wish, God, I want to go back to Cosmo when it's like nighttime, man. ま、そういったあの、大きいイメージとしての印象はそこなんないように角度を切り捨てみました。あの、アプローチに関してはやっぱ特徴的にやったのが、ま、メインメニューを開いた時に、あの、キャラクターが立ってるっていうところで、その
、まあ、もちろんそのミニゲームとかそう一個一個孤立したものもあるんですけど、まあ、そこ全部含めて僕らはやっぱりいいものにしたいっていうのでやっぱ日々作ってるところがあるんでまあワールドマップというどこから探索してもいいしすごくどこ行っても発見があるしどこ行っても非常に楽しいサブクエストがあるしどこ行ってもミニゲームがあるしっていうこうそういうどっちかというと今まではそこが相反するものですね遊び方としては相反するものどこ行ってもいいよっていう部分とよりこうがっつりとメインストーリー楽しむっていう部分が相反する部分がまあすごくいいバランスであの同居してるというか融合してるっていう部分は今までない。I think they nailed it. Like, again, it was never my intention starting this game to 100% it、uh, on first playthrough. Never my intention. All I was going to do was just approach it and just start doing shit and see if I like it.、Um, and if I like it, I'll just keep going. And the game kept rewarding me with cool shit. And I just kept getting new stuff. And I kept going to places that looked really cool and meeting characters that were cool. And I was like, well, fuck, I guess I'm 100%ing this game. Goddamn Mogs, though, in the end, dude. Fucking Mogs. There was one thing I thought would change would be the, the Mog houses. They wouldn't just get, like, you know, be weird to more frustrating and more frustrating and more frustrating. These little mother fifers, I'm gonna get you, you stupid fuzzy bitch. Burn the Mog House. <laughs> you, you just complete the Mog trial and just cast Fyraga on the tree. And just, oh, <laughs> just sit there watching it up in flames.、Uh, part two. ファイナルファンタジー7リバースはですねその皆さんが期待しているクラウドやバレットエレスティファーなどを中心としたそのメインキャラクターを中心としたよりこう深くシリアスでドラマチックなストーリーが、えー、描かれていますので例えばですね、えっと、オリジナルの FF7 のストーリーの中でやっぱりあの名場面とかあのすごくいいエピソードだみたいな真実を知るみたいなもう有名な有名すぎてあのこうネタバレにもならないというかそういうあのシーンもあってあの驚くほどですねその25年前の,あのストーリーをそのまま再現しているところ名場面に関してはあのそのまま再現していることが多いんですけれどもそれでもですね本当にリアリティを持ってあの伝わるしあのそこにあのキャラクターのボイスであるとかあのすごいあの専用の BGM が乗っかってあの見せることで,ですねよりあの名場面が際立っているっていうところがまず一つありますね。リバース、まあリメイクリバースのシナリオを書く上で。原作にはないシーンを加えて拡張していった。No shit。拡張するということを、まあ。で、で、で。それは。あのキャラクターを深掘りしたときに。前はデフォルメ。You know, I, and you have to. I have to give them mad credit because it's like. It's another situation similar to.、Uh, Remake part one, where it's like 95% of the game is a preservation, expansion, and absolute love letter to the original Final Fantasy VII in ways that I was never ever expecting. Like, just I like the characterization, much less the addition of brand new elements that weren't there before. Um, specifically, things like the Gi and the uh, the Republic. I was like. This is really cool. <laughs> This shit is really cool. And there's like a 5% that goes off the deep end. And that's like a 5%. まあ、技術力だとそこまで表現しきれなかったものがこうより深く表現できることになったので
オリジナルは基本的には参考にしています、まあ、それ以外にもあの FF7 関連の作品はあのすごい多くあるのでそれらも含めてあの一通りリファレンスとして参考に制作しています。Oh my god, these animatics are so cool! Holy crap! I love seeing this shit! I love seeing this shit! This is so sick! They essentially have their like, you know, 2D storyboard and then the, the cinematography uh, uh, animatic. That's the loveless scene. ここに対して、えー、と演技のイメージっていうのを事前にこう資料としてまとめてあって、まあ、その資料が具体的にどんなものかっていうと、まあ、例えばそのなんだこう立ちポーズの,そのキャラのこうイメージに合う、えーとまあ、例えばティファだったらこういうポーズが、まあ、手にちょっと手っていうか腰か腰にこう手を当てるようなポーズがまあちょっとティファっぽいよねとかそういう感じの、えー、と情報がまとまってるものになりますね。キャラクターたちをまあどのようにこうまあよりリアルというかあのまあ命を吹き込むかっていうこう観点で言うとやっぱりこうフェイシャルに関しては非常にあのまあこだわるというか注意をしていましたまあ特にそのまあ今ってその原作と違ってあのキャラクターたちにボイスオーバーというかまあセリフが全部載ってこう感情を言うんですけどまあ映画とかもこう今のこう演出ってそうなんですけど別に言葉がなくても表情だけで人の感情って伝わる Yeah and there's a lot of moments like that in this game where uh they show but don't tell at times it it becomes even a, a problem i'd say where there's so much showing and not telling in a point where we're looking for answers but to be real like i, I kind of appreciate at some points what they're what they're showing us what our characters are going through they don't just have the characters say what they're feeling right they do not have the characters just say i feel sad or i feel happy like they they are conveying information through micro expressions and stuff like that which is kind of like filmmaking shit you know that's actual performance <laughs> 今回ってやっぱそれをすごくあの意識してとかやっていて、特にセリフがないところでもキャラクターのこのわずかなこう表情とか仕草でなんかグッと心をつかまれるシーンっていうのがものすごく数いっぱいあるんで、なんかそこはぜひあの見てもらいたいところの。Yeah, just in terms of like that 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 element in the first game, um, grunts, right? Characters grunting to carry a scene to the next seem to happen just way too often. Uh, I didn't notice it at all here. Right? It might, it probably still happened every once in a while, but that's like a localization thing as well. It felt like they didn't need to do that anymore. It felt significantly less. Cloud is a remake of the story of Barrett and Tifa, the Avalanche group, and the Yohei, and the Nandemoya, and the Yatoare. These guys describing this story like we don't know it. あの立場だったんですけれどもそのリメイクの中で彼らとの絆を築いて仲間として認めお互いに認め合うあの形で、えー、ミッドガルを脱出していますクラウドはリメイクの中ではあのなんて言うんでしょうねなめられないように頑張ってたのが仲間たちと一緒に、まあ、行動するうちになんとなく自分の居場所を得た感じになって。ね、God damn, that scene is so good. Another, another super good example of a scene. Just let the visuals and let the character emotional state carry it. Let them carry it. So fucking good. Like I love this scene in this game. Kakonibul 編のクラウドがあったんですけど、まあ5年前っていう設定でもありますし、あのキャラクター的にもちょっと若いクラウドでさらに。その中にちょっと今までとイメージの違うクラウドを作らなくてはいけなかったのでモデル自体ちょっと若いモデルを用意してもらったりまあフェイシャルをつける時も少し明るめだったりまあ元気を少し足したようなやり方をしたんですけどそのセフィアスの,さっていうのを皆さんが知っているから「クラウド」完璧じゃな完璧に見えて完璧じゃないところが魅力なのかなってちょっと思いますね。おそらくそれはクラウドも一緒で、なんか完璧じゃないその弱さが結構そのよ弱いところがしっかり描かれてるってところが。
ティファは、えー、バレットと同じアバランチというグループの一員なんですけれどもそのアバランチの過,過激な活動に関しては、えー、リメイクの時から少しためらいがあって悩みを抱えながらあの一緒に行動をしていたんですけれどもそんなあの死んだカンパニーの、えー、陰謀によってですねアバランチが窮地に追い込まれた状況の中でもうその活動を続けるしかないっていうあの覚悟を決めつつもでもやっぱりまだ揺れる思いは抱えて。あのいながらまあリバースにあの旅を始めますんであのやっぱり彼女の中にはその幼なじみのクラウドっていう存在が大きくあってでそのクラウドの様子が時々おかしくなったりとかすることをあの彼女なりにやっぱり心配に思っていることがあるので、えー、それもあって一緒に行動してるっていうのはもう原作の,あの設定と同じ形になってる。そうですねティファーに関して言うとクラウドのことをまあ心配するっていうこともあるんですけれどもあのいよいよクラウドが本当にど,どういうふうに考えてるんだろうとかっていうところにちょっとやっぱりあの疑問を抱いたりとかクラウドのことを心配するがあまりあの質問がきつくなって何、えー、て言うのかなあの少し口論になったりとかそういうあの感情の部分であのぶつかることとかもあるようなあのそういうあのより身近な関係として描く。あのクラウドとの関係を、えー、描いているようなストーリーが最初から入ってきております。先輩のプログラマーにもう発売になった頃にエアリスとティファって仲悪いよねっていう<笑>全然そんなつもりで作ってなかった、ね。<笑>エアリスとティファ don't get along do they？ <笑>はその彼女たちは仲いいと思ってすごい仲良くなれたという。So that was not my intention. Funny to say that that was not my intention with the old game, but you know, characters only had so much dialogue and moments that, well, I guess. 作ってたのにそういうふうにあの解釈されたっていうのがずっと残ってて。<笑> Yeah, they come across as, as, as effing besties in this game, especially. Ballet was this remake of the Toki, and this is the Hoshino Energy, and this is the Gyuji, and this is the Company, and this is the Avalanche, and this is the group of leaders. リメイクの中でそのシンラに利用されてアバランチの活動をする中でジェシーやミックスウェッジっていう仲間たちは命を失ってですねもうあのその思いを抱えて引くに引けない状況でミッドガルを脱出しています娘のマリンっていうのがミッドガルに残されているんですけれどもそのことは気がかりではあるんだけれどもその状況の中でミッドガルから逃亡して。そのアバランチとしての活動を続けなければいけないみたいな葛藤の中旅を始めていくことになりますバレットのこのなんだろう過去のまあ親友というかとあの友であるダインというキャラクターがいてそのキャラダインのキャラクターのにまつわるエピソードっていうのはやっぱり原作と同様に描かれるんですけど原作はなんだろう本音と自分自身はそこまで原作の時のダインのエピソードってそこまでこう心を動かすような感じではなかったんですけど本作リバースにおいては非常にそのこうエピソードが。Nah, it was good in the old game. 感情的により。It was, it was still good in the old game too. されていて、非常にこう、今作の中でも非常にこう、良いシーンに仕上がっているので、まあやっぱりリメイクプロデュースを作るにあたって、よりカット、縮小することなく、しっかりと描き切ったってことは、あの結果的には成功につながってるんじゃないかなと、今では思って自分にも娘がいるので感情移入がめちゃめちゃしているのであそこには変な力の入れ方をしています<笑><笑>なんか全体的にこう家族ネタ強いよねうちのチームそうですね、うん、エアリスはですねあの街の花売りとしてクラウドたちと出会うんですけれどもあのリメイクの物語の終わりの方に差し掛かるとですねあのシンラカンパニーが探している約束の地と呼ばれる星のエネルギーがあの大きたくさん眠っている場所を誰も知らない場所なんですけれどもあのそこに結びつくと呼ばれているあの世界の特殊なあの種族の古代種セトラと呼ばれるあの種族の唯一の生き残りであるということが分かりますでその存在であるがゆえにあのシンラカンパニーに狙われて一度は囚われたりするんですけれどもそこをクラウドたちが救出することによって。ミッドガルから旅を始めると
エアジスはもうリバースになると基本的にいつも明るく振る舞ってそのムードメーカーみたいな感じになってるんですけども、まあ、結構深刻なものを抱えてるのでそのギャップが見どころと言いますか<笑>、はい、例えばあの今回ですとコスモキャニオンっていうあの、まあ、7機の故郷の。This was a great scene, too. Completely unique to Rebirth. wasn't in the OG at all. リメイクの中の物語は、えー、運命の壁というか、えー、そのなんていうのかなあの最後に、えー、その運命の壁を打破するっていうところがリメイクの話で,でその運命っていうものは何なのかっていうものをなんとなく感づいているのかどうかは、えー、とエアリスが実は知っているのではないかみたいな、yeah. そういったものも全て、えー、なくなった状態でリバースが始まりますのでエアリスにとっては、yeah. あのその新しい世界がまさにこれから始まっていくと。楽しい気持ちで旅を始めるという形になっております。一番大あの初稿というか一個で野島さんから上がってきたストーリーっていうのを読んだときに、まあ、まあ、今作っていうのは忘れる都までっていうのをあの描く物語になってて、そこのこう結末に対してキャラクターたちの絆とか関係性を非常に描いているストーリーラインだったんですよ。なんでまあ、そこをただストーリーだけに閉じるんではなくて。ゲームデザインもちゃんとそのキャラクターたちのこう関係性との絆っていうのを描いてあげることでそのまあ野島さんのこうシナリオをいただいて読んだ時にまあ私の方で今回のゲームデザインとして見た時のテーマの絆にしよう。Yeah, they echoed that where like no,、uh, clearly like they the, almost like I'd say even more than the overarching plot of you know FF7 remake to rebirth this game Focuses so hard on characters and character relationships. It almost is the story of this game, right? To be, to be completely honest, like with a little bit of perspective after like playing through a lot of it, the real story of this game is in all of the subplots, is in all of the inter character dynamics, their origins, their relationships with each other, like all that stuff. It almost feels like they spend. Practically, this entire game focusing on it, and it's incredibly good. It's so good. So, I won't, you know, say that、uh, eventually we, we, want, we want a bit more information, but maybe, you know, the, the game spends most of its time not doing that, instead focusing on, you know, this stuff, which is where they expanded gameplay. <laughs> まあ、ストーリーを進めることでキャラクターの関係性がどう変わっていくかっていうところはまず一つ大きいところで言うとまずクラウドと仲間たちの関係性っていうのをあのストーリーを進めたりとか、まあ、クエストを進めたりとかすることでこう変化していったり、まあ、キャラクターのこうセリフ含めてそこに対してのこう差別化があるみたいなところっていうのをあの入れていますカットシーンには選択肢があるんですねでそのキャラクターの好感度によって見れるカットシーンが異なってきますなので例えばティファーに好感を持ってもらっていたらティファの特別なカットシーンが流れますぜひ皆さんには何度もプレイしてもらいたいと思っています<笑> 23週, 23週<笑>まあそれぞれのキャラとの距離感っていうのもありますし愛情表現でもその恋愛もあれば<笑>家族もあり、まあそういう話をこう<笑>絡めながらなのかなっていう<笑>多分ティファがご縁が大事って言ってるんですけどもまあそれが今回の世界観全体に関わってくるんですけどこう人と人と触れ合うことでその何かが生まれるじゃないですかご縁が重なって運命になるっていうんですかね<笑>そのあたりの。結局うんなんかセブンでそこによってキャラクターとの関係性によってこう変化するっていうものがなんかセブンらしさの一つではあるのかなとは思うので。Yeah, I get it. 
All right. What are we going to talk about this? クラウドたちとは違う角度からこの世界を見るっていうそういう役割を果たしてもらいたくてまあ早めに登場してもらってます今回のキャラクターとは別にこのこの舞台にリバースリメイクリバースの舞台になっている星世界がどんなものかってい
a lot of people were feeling like, hey, you know, that means that the next game is just going to be missing a, po a bunch of locations, a bunch of locales, right? Like, oh, there's an, they're going to cut things because they don't, it's not the same game anymore. They're just doing this to sort of cut corners, right? That, that was the impression a lot of people got from the end of the game because the end of the game deviated so much. Um, and to me, it was like, it, it, it's the same thing that sort of happened with Rebirth, and I don't want to talk about spoiler stuff, but yes, like the end of the game, the last 5% leaves a very distinct impression that the rest of the game doesn't. And to effectively think that like, well, because like a potential 5 to 10% of the game is kind of weird and, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of the ballpark, a little crazy... Um, does it mean that the rest of the game was not already a super faithful adaptation with, uh, you know, a, a pretty decent expansion therein? Talking about Remake, it was! Like, it, the majority of Remake was really good outside of, you know, some goofy sewer elements and stuff like that in, in some, some not-so-great dungeons. But really, like, oh, you do all the same stuff you do in FF7. You do all the same shit. So, to me, it kind of felt like why would we expect that to change in the next game? That was sort of my feeling after Rebirth. I was like, why do we expect that to suddenly be way different for the next one? Oh, by the way, um, I didn't, by the way, I didn't know you guys any gift subs. We had, we had a sewer gift sub bet. There were no sewers in this game. There wasn't a single sewer. In this 130 hour game, there was no sewers. We had a gift sub bet that like you had to visit sewers twice in Remake. And uh, a, a lot of people thought that we would be going to sewers. Gongaga had one? A sewer? Gongaga had a sewer? That was under the reactor. That wasn't a sewer. That was just like, the reactor was like, flooded. No, 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 that was not a sewer. A sewer is where sewage goes. Like, under a, a, under a town where everyone's shit and piss. Corel Prison? No, there was no sewer in Corel Prison. You go down a hole, and you fight some fights down there. But... Like, we're talking... You're, you're, our characters are going through shit and piss in an underground facility meant to siphon the sewage of our party, right? We didn't get that. If, if that happened during the playthrough, I would have had to put in the gift subs. We bet, I think, several hundred gift subs that uh, there was going to be no sewer in uh, friggin', there was going to be no sewer in Rebirth. And as I recall, that did not happen. That did not happen. Kate Sith's dungeon is not a sewer. Kate Sith's dungeon is just a retelling of uh, Shinra Manor, but worse. リバースの場合はメインストーリーのありもあのキャラクターごとにクエストがありますので、それぞれのキャラクターがあのどう活躍するクエストをプレイしていたというそのキャラクターのさらに面白い言動であるとか決めたモイトもそういう隠されたエピ
there's a crazy one with with retrospect that uh really blew my mind he has one line when you're about to go into the temple of the ancients this is not really a spoiler he just has a line that says uh something along the lines of uh sometimes uh sometimes meeting with expectation will only lead to disappointment uh yeah he says expectations often lead to disappointment before you go into temple of the ancients and it's like all right. All right, man. They gave him some lines in this game. Yeah, Vincent was humorous in Advent Children, too, right? Vincent actually had some humor in, in AC that I'm glad carried over to this game. The fact that the first time you run into him, you know, and he doesn't know how to use the device is so fucking funny. I was like, what the hell? Only Kate Sith knows how to use it. Damn. <laughs> he may seem a bit middle aged, but he's actually quite young and in his early 30s. Damn, it's changing. That, that perception has now changed because, you know, all the people that are now making this game are in their, like, 30s, if not 40s, if not 50s, and they're like, that's not that old anymore, man. Like, that's actually super... Sid's supposed to be this old man, but he's 31 <laughs> or some shit. あの、野村さんと話を何回も重ねて今のリバースらしい指導が作れたかなと思っています。例えばシッドですが、彼がアメリカ南部の鉛がありましたので、それをリバースでも採用しました。魅力はその yeah, dude, the glow-ups of Yuffie and uh, Kate Sith cannot be given more credit. I, I can't even... The fact that they made Yuffie and Kate Sith both endearing characters, the fact that Yuffie has, like, Yuffie and Kate Sith both get really good arcs throughout this game and, like, great backstory is crazy. ま、ま、特にバレットとのえ、やりとりでは、ま、ユフィのそのま、涼しいところとか、無邪気なところとかがよく見えてとても楽しかったと思います。ま、そこをどんどんこう、バトルだとどうだというと、やっぱもう。This is true. In, in battle, she definitely feels like a hyperactive teenager. I got to give them credit there. That was apparently intentional. So even in battle, she has to feel like a hyperactive teenager. Absolutely, that's the way she feels like in fights. 100%。とにかく動き回る。忍者らしく動き回るっていうところと、あと気持ちよさ。アトル中のレスポンスであったりとか、触ってもどんどん触りたくなるような気持ちをよ、良いプレイができるキャラクターっていうので、アトルは進め
You feel it throughout the game. トラとかライオンもそうですけど、あんまりその表情に対して喜怒哀楽みたいなものって分かりづらいんですよね。人間みたいにこう眉がすごく動くわけではないので、すごくこう怒ってるか、ニュートラルかくらいだったら分かるん
他のキャラと同じようにすごい数があるでそこの差別化をしていくのは、まあ、とても難しいという感じでしたスターダスレイキャラクターがある中で今度レッド13を追加するっていう時に、まあ、全く違う遊び方を作りたかったのでその防御からこう派生していろんなものが展開していくっていうタイプのキャラはまだいなかったんで、まあ、そこでその。So that's another thing that has to give more credit. Immediate, immediate and more credit. Oh, yeah, the name was familiar. This dude is from Capcom, right? Teruki Endo? Was that what it was? Yeah, this dude's from Capcom. Ah. He's from Monster Hunter World. Is he also in Devil May Cry? No, no, that's the FF16 dude. No, 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 no. That's a different guy. That was the dude from FF16. Was it the same? Was he also on this game and that game? No, just Monster Hunter. Okay, okay. So, oh, what we're trying to say is there was multiple extremely talented combat folks that came from Capcom and went over to Square Enix. It wasn't just one. There was multiple that eventually, like, jumped ship over to Square Enix. Wow, that's crazy. Um, as I was going to say, credit, massive credit. Every character in this game feels wildly unique to play. No, no character feels samey at all. An issue the original FF7 has, where Cloud's just jack of all trades the best in almost like everything. And then like every other character, you sort of got to make up for that with glitches or, you know, uh, cramming them full of materia to balance it. No, no, no. Th this game was like every single character needs to feel ridiculously unique or challenging or different can't be the same uh and i i won't i won't even say some spoiler stuff in the end but yes they, every character that you play is unique パーティー全体のこう絆ですねクラ,クラウドとこうキャラクターっていう,こうものではなくてパーティー全体の絆結構こうファイナルファンタジーってストーリーがすごく注目されるゲームですし、まあ、キャラクターが愛されるゲームなんで、まあ、そこをこうバトル側からも支援というか深くこうそこに密接に。It's one of the things that people love so much about Chrono Trigger, dude. Like anytime I remember people hyping me up about Chrono Trigger back in the day when I did not have invested interest in RPGs, everyone would tell me about dual techs. Everyone would say, oh, it's so. You can light the sword on fire with another character and they spin with a fire sword. It's so sick. Uh, like that, that always was something that was heavily emphasized back then. And even when we were talking about uh, this game, I was so excited in, when Integrate came out and it was the beginning of synergy, synergy skills or synergy abilities. Where it was like, yeah, obviously, like dual techs and triple techs is something that I w was clamoring about. I'm not the biggest Chrono Trigger guy, but that's always been a very cool thing that should come back. And yes, they, they, they legit do it, right? They actually went full ham with it, where it's like big, expensive moves, but also, you know, uh, uh, all time usage, no cost moves that aren't as big and powerful. To me, the thing, synergy, synergy abilities are super sick in this game. They are super sick. But the, the, the thing in this game that I absolutely love is synergy skills. I love synergy skills. They're so cool, dude. All the little, the little moments in between of you chucking Tifa or Cloud jumping in front of, of, of Aerith or like characters like running forward together. They, they're not big, you know, cinematic moves like limit breaks and synergy skills, but they really spice up the combat in a way that I was not expecting. And I'm, I'm, I was thrilled with it. You don't even have to use it. You barely even need to use it, but God damn, are they so cool. っていけるような要素がやっぱ必要だなと思ってたんで、まあ、そういう意味で連携要素っていうのを追加させてもらったんです、まあ、ゲームの中だとあのパーティーレベルっていうパーティー自体のこう絆をレベルに表現してるんですけど、まあ、仲間の絆も増えていくとこうあのゲーム的なキャラクターの拡張性も増えていってその拡張性が増えることでバトル自体のキャラクターの連携感も増えていくみたいな感じのこうデザインにしました。そうするそれによってこうユーザーはじゃあどのあのパーティーメンバーでこう冒険しようっていうのをユーザーが自分で選ぶことができるんですよね。キャラク
ターの組み合わせについてはまあ当然その好きなキャラクターで遊びたいっていうのがあるとは思うんでまあそこで例えばこう好きなキャラクターなのに苦手なアクション性だったりとかっていうのはまあどうしても発生するとは思うんですけどまあそれをこう防ぐために全部同じようなキャラクターにしちゃうとまあなかなかこうバトルに厚みが出ないのでまあそこはあえてそのキャラの。その特性からまあイメージできるようなスタイルをこう意識して作ってでまあ組み合わせによって全然違う戦い方になったりするっていうのはまあそうですね好きなキャラクター使いたいけどこのキャラクターのこの遊び方をこうちょっとマスターして Yeah this game almost like heavy handed wants you to try other characters like it it forces it at times and and even gives each character their own dungeon to a certain degree Uh, because it's like, yeah, you get the option for the majority of the game, but you really we want you to play these characters. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the option for the majority of the game, but you really want you to play these characters. Yeah, you actually feel like you're a team. Right? You actually feel like you're fighting as a team. That's very important. <laughs> I never got to use this. Damn, that's a cool one. What the hell? なんちゅう普通に喋ったり会話したりするのでまあその辺はなんか人になりすぎないようにというかは気を付けていましたねまああとはあのキットシーはあの可愛いキャラなので役者さんもあのコミカルに動いてくれて動き自体にもまあ表
敵である存在をみこう仲間としてちゃんと感じてもらうだとかはそういう要素っていうのがセブンで外せない部分だと思っていたのでセフィロスは必須でした、えっと、本作のローカライズ言語数ですが前作と同じでボイスは英語フランス語ドイツ語の3言語。字幕は、えー、欧米言語ですとかあとアジア言語など10言語にローカライズしていまして各国のユーザーの皆さんに、まあ、それぞれの言語で日本語版と同じ世界観を体験いただけるように工夫を凝らしていますリムエキでもそうでしたがエアリスのセリフが結構難しかったです彼女の動作と話し方がとても特徴的で文章の中で大きな間を置くことが多いんですけれども例えば、えー、日本語は一つの文章でもその文章の中で三つの間が空いた場合は海外版ではまあ二つか三つの文章にした方がリズム的に自然だったりしますがまあそうすると言葉の選択肢が限られてきますので意外と難しかった難しかったです日本語の意図や雰囲気を維持しながらたくさんのことを考慮しないとイーロクライズができません特に印象的だったリーバースに登場するシーンは最初のニーベヘムでの場面だと思いますあのシリーズにおけるストーリーの重要な部分でありあの今まで見てたクラウドの性格とはまた違う面を見せており翻訳も楽しく収録もかなり盛り上がりました通常のクラウドの演技とは全く違うとても良いシーンにはなったと思いますと、まあ、リバースはあのテキスト量もボイス量も莫大なのでまあ、同じ規模のゲームと比較しても作業期間は長い方なのではないかなと思っています。驚くほどですね、no、25年前の,あのストーリーをそのまま再現しているところ、名場面に関してはあのそのまま再現していることが多いんですけれども、それでもですね本当にリアリティを持ってあの伝わるし、あのそこにあのキャラクターのボイスであるとか、あのすごいあの専用の BGM が乗っかってあの見せることで,です、ね、よりあの名場面があの際立っている。パーーティーメンバー同士または脇キャラとのやり取りの中でキレキレのセリフ面白い冗談驚かせる進展や泣かせるシーンがいっぱい詰まってますストーリー以外にもですねあの自由なあの広大な世界を探検するあの楽しみであるとかあのいろんなクエストを探してあのそれぞれのキャラクターがどういうふうにそのクエストの中で。あの行動するのかっていうのを見ることでよりあのこれまで愛してこられたキャラクターがさらに好きになってもらえるように作っておりますあのぜひその辺を楽しんでいただければと思います世界中を回るぐらいの勢いでもう走り回ってこういろんな街をこう何度も訪れたりとかしてもうくまなく見てほしいという気持ちはあるんですがただまあ自分はバトルがメインであるのでまあ一番バトルを楽しんでほしいし、す<笑>べての連携アビリティを見てほしいとぐらい思っているところではあります。本当にユーザーが自由にこのワールドマップを冒険しながら、まあ今何をこう冒険しようかな、何を遊ぼうかなみたいなのを非常にユーザーの選択で決めれるようなこうゲームデザインにしているので、体験体感していただきたいかなと思います。このリバースという世界を。ちゃんとこう旅を続けても旅をしてもらった中でそれぞれこう最後に何を思うかっていうのは人それぞれ多分その旅ありきで変わってくると思うのでそれは楽しみにしていただきたいと思います。マー、プレイズ。クラウド、Lend me your strength. Let us defy destiny. Together. The villain never thinks they're the villain. That's the beauty of it. Their perspective is always justified. And there's a thin line that Sephiroth threads beautifully. In one moment, you're like, wait, I get it. I'm on this guy's side. Is he doing the right thing? He's not this like over the top, mwa ha 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 villain. He's this very calculated puppet master, especially in this game. You never really know with him. Because it seems like he knows everything and we know nothing. He knows so much and he can get inside of Kyle's head. He starts off as a soldier with people who look up to him, with the protagonist who looks up to him. He was 
made into a monster, not of his own choice. And it was the realization that he essentially had no path but to become a monster that broke him and forced him to embrace that. You can't wait to see how much more of that thread he pulls from Cloud, how much he attempts to unravel and kind of lead him down a similar path. Seven seconds till the end. <sighs> Time enough for you, perhaps. But what will you do with it? Let's see. We still don't know! <laughs> we still don't know! Real from when Cloud rode the train in, all cool like into Midgar in the beginning. A lot has transpired, so the stakes have just been risen. I think. Moral compass has not really shifted. Who Cloud is hasn't really shifted. I think the fight against Sephiroth, the fight against Shinra, all of that stays true, and if anything is exacerbated in the second game. The biggest shift really is, I would say, just the essence of Cloud, his personality, what he allows to show through. There's a lot more emotional depth, I feel. I think every relationship that Cloud has is important in its own way. It's dynamic because with every person, we see a little bit of a different side of Cloud. Cloud interacts with Barrett in a very different way than how he interacts with Tifa. His vulnerability with Tifa is also very different than his vulnerability with Aerith. In the first game, the scenes with Aerith going through the rooftops and kind of traversing the slums, there was so much raw and honest interaction between the two, and I feel like it peeled back so many layers for the both of them. The water tower scene, that's definitely one of my favorites. I have like a, an anchor line, if you will, that was so drilled into me the first like three months of doing this game and Cloud's infamous like not interested. Always, if I'm ever questioning the tone or where I need to be with it, like I'll always I'll go to that line because it's there. There's an exterior to <laughs> not Cloud, interested. That's what most people see initially and that's that tough, abrasive, cold, almost disheartened exterior shell. In the first game, we kind of got introduced to Cloud that way and slowly as the game progressed, we got to peel away the layers. We got to see what was inside. The second game, we get to really see the core of Cloud, the emotional depth, the vulnerability, the likability, the goofball-esque, if you will. You know, this little boy that has been hardened just through circumstances in life, we get to kind of see a lot more of that. But all in all, I think Cloud is just, uh, he's a very interesting human being, and I've fallen in love portraying him. Tifa? You're our guide? I sure am. You can ask anyone around here. I'm the best there is. Tifa is impassioned, and she definitely has a sense of, like, righteousness and anger and determination. And then the voice cast for this game is nuts. But that's also balanced with this, like, really compassionate side. I think Tifa's internal conflict in terms of getting revenge, taking down Shinra, but also this moral compass of what is right and wrong is kind of my favorite aspect of who she is because I think it makes her so human. She is not just solely driven by revenge and hate. She's also very caring and doesn't want innocent people to be killed or pay the price in the crosshair. I think in this game, you get to see so much more of Tifa's past and all of the trauma that she has been through and carries and is kind of forced to confront. We really get to delve deeper and see what she has gone through and also understand what is motivating her. It's not like she's super old, you know? This, this, she's young to have gone through this. So it just makes me more empathetic as an actor, as a fan for her journey. I am most proud of the scenes between Cloud and Tifa. I think those are my favorite because that relationship is so deep and there's so much history and so many years have gone by. So it's always fun when we get to really dive deep into some some emotion because it's hard to break through clouds tough exterior so those those rare moments like a reminder they're, they're unlike some some va in the olden days all of this is recorded locally so well meaning that they're not in the same studio together right when when you eventually have all these lines delivered and shit they have to still find a way to communicate with like a character and actually have them not be there moments are fun to play Wait, what are you implying? That I died? That I'm some kind of imposter? 
Tifa's relationship with Cloud is really challenged in Rebirth. That is terrifying for her as it would be for anyone. You kind of get to see their relationship really be stretched and um, put to the test. I think you also get to see her develop her friendship with Aerith as they both are concerned for him and Tifa confides in her and I think we get to see that develop and grow that relationship. It's exciting, it's exciting for me as the actor and I hope for the fan base. Well, can we rent some birds? Yes, but what can about we? the tiny blankets? <laughs> the true question. That's what the chat will ask. <laughs> when we first meet Aerith, she is a flower seller from the slums who spends a lot of her time in an abandoned church. But as the game goes on, you get to know her more. You find out she's the last descendant of an ancient race called the Cetra, who have the ability to commune with the planet and wield the power of the life stream. At the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, Aerith talks about how the next part of their journey represents total and complete freedom. She calls it boundless and terrifying freedom. She's incredibly scared of what's to come because a lot of her life has been spent in very small circles and in confinement even. So in Rebirth, she is able to conquer that fear and face it and actually experience some of the joys of freedom. And that's a really cool journey to go on with her. I think a lot of Aerith's character development through the course of Rebirth has a lot to do with her friendships. She grows to love them so deeply and I think that really informs her character and informs all of her decisions through the very end. These memories were precious? Yes. Extremely. The line where Aerith is telling Wedge, you can do it, I believe in you, you just gotta try your best. And lines like, gotta look forward, not back. Those lines are the lines I'm most proud of because those have an impact far beyond the game because they impact people and help them push forward when things are hard. Aerith has this beautiful way of shining a light through the dark. The way that she embraces life and embraces joy and happiness in every single moment that she lives is so beautiful and so impactful. It's such a lesson for all of us. And that's gotta be the reason that people are so moved by her character. She's worked her way into people's hearts and just doesn't leave. Only dumbasses believe that shit. Question, does that make me a dumbass? Uh, I didn't say that. What I meant was, screw Shinra for manipulating honest folks. Barrett's a leader, he's a father. He's a pretend father to some of the members of Avalanche. I would say definitely Cloud, unknowingly to both at times. He's fiery, he's tough, he's real, but he's a leader and he cares about people and obviously about the planet. You know, from the moment the uh, train lands and, you know, Cloud jumps off, and you better be worth every penny, Merc. You see him as this commanding big guy, like, hey, it's about the mission, let's go. And then he's talking smack the whole time, like, why are you hesitating? Gotta blow this reactor up. Obviously, in the beginning, I care about the team more than I care about the mercenary who we just hired. And then you see as he grows, he cares about him and he's part of the team, but he's also got Marlene. He's also got the people of Midgard. He's got, got all these different things that he cares about. And then all of a sudden, we get to this one, Rebirth, and we're in a whole different realm. I did what I did, and I can live with it. One of the most difficult things about portraying Barrett is that I never want him to come off as a caricature or come off as a stereotype or be looked at in a negative way because of his culture, his race, his creed. He's not as angry as most people think he is, especially for those who play the original. But in Rebirth, Barrett is very caring, but self-reflecting. So people get, get to it. see the actual center of who he is because of his story being told. I mean, and uh, God, this is, this is why I think I love Remake and Rebirth so much is that outside of like crazy overarching plot stuff you know that we either want answers on or don't get enough answers on and search for meaning in it uh the the real thing in ff7 all of the most important moments in ff7 are character driven even in the older games right 
um, again, one of the most important and best parts of the original FF7 doesn't actually come down to like a big, oh, I like the part where, you know, uh, th this one big event happens or like it's the plate fall or something like that, like some crazy giant plot event that happens related. Usually the part of FF7 that OG FF7 fans will really get excited about is Cloud's Awakening. And it's purely character driven. Every single part of, of that element in the game towards the end of the game, his eventual turn, the eventual like, and I don't want to talk too much about it because a lot of people still don't know about it um, or just haven't seen it yet. That part of the game is so sick. It is, it's so incredibly cool when uh, you actually find out who Cloud is. And, you know, in turn, what happens to Tifa and the characters like around th those moments. It's so cool. Um, and how that has an impact on the rest of the party after that. And then the effect of just like, let's go whoop ass like type of thing. It truly is like the ultimate character moment. The ultimate character moment. So again, the, a thing that makes me so happy just in general, even though I might want more answers in places that we don't get them, the characters in Remake and Rebirth are so good. They are, they are so good for every moment that, you know, I, I kind of wish there was something else. They, they give, they've given us so much great characterization between them that it's like, this is everything I've wanted since the original game. A lot of interpretation came from me for Barrett. I mean, I have an uncle who actually sounds like Barrett. So I'm like, let me, let me just put, you know, my uncle into this too, and then see where this goes. Now, my uncle doesn't have as many layers as Barrett. So I was just like, oh, thanks for the voice, Uncle. I'll, I'll take some of that and you know do beer with that. But that that was what we did for my part on it. But it was fun. Without your help, I'd still be in Hojo's clutches, trapped in that lab. When we first encounter Red Thirteen, he is this mysterious creature who's being held captive in this evil scientist's lab, and he's being experimented on. And so we think he's this wise old man. We come to learn he's actually this brave and loyal and trustworthy friend. It's all about trust with Red, and we see that he is very closed off to the group towards the beginning of the game. And in Rebirth, we have this opportunity to see him open up. We see Red learning about his past and the truth about his family, and then we also get to see him make new family. His scene at Cosmo Canyon, that part of the game, is absolutely stunning the way it plays out from beginning to end. You see a character really transform and learn who he is and where he comes from. This character who's like 48 years old and finally learning the, the real story of his past. Red 13 is searching for his own identity. He's loyal to these people who freed him from these dire circumstances and is maybe using this as an opportunity to figure out more about who he really is and who he wants to be. I, uh, I feel like I realized something about Red 13 that I might not have, and maybe it's intentional. Uh, and it's his juxtaposition to Cloud, right? If you, if you compare, like, and we don't know everything about Cloud's story yet, but with a, with a little bit of perspective, Red 13 and Cloud are very similar characters and what they're trying to portray to the other people around them. And I again, it was something that I probably didn't pick up at all in the older games, but as I was playing through this and I realized what they are doing to Red 13, I was like, huh. And this, there's definitely a comparison here, like character-wise, on what they're going for. I'm back now, Aerith. I'm back. Zack is courageous. He's loyal. He's got a compassionate heart for others. You're gonna see some new friendship dynamics and some old ones come about, and that's a big thing for Zach. The first one that comes to mind is him and Cloud's relationship. It just is, one, the friendship that everybody wants, a friendship like that, but two, I just learned so much from their dynamic. Also with Aerith as well. And you're gonna see some new relationships as well, like Marlene. And like I said, you're gonna see new sides of him because of that. I think fans are gonna love 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 the story that we're telling i think they're going to be surprised i think they're going to be just shocked at the direction that we go with it i couldn't think of a better story to tell for this next iteration of zach i think they're going to love it i know i did
Zach's voice really warmed up on me throughout this game, especially. You kind of don't forget when your material gets stolen. <laughs> You're kind of left with, with nothing. <laughs> I, I think she, she left an impact on players. Yuffie is a super cool ninja from Wutai, but she is pretty much everything you would not envision a ninja to be. She is very theatrical and has really lofty visions of herself. She kind of has a one-track mind and that is Materia. <laughs> but, you know, even for all the times that she messes up, she still sticks the landing because after all, she is still a ninja, so. <laughs> She had a very closed view of the world around her. She came from Wutai. She never really ventured too much beyond it. And she thinks very highly of Wutai and very not highly of everything else. <laughs> from more Wutai, please. Oh, don't worry. We're getting, we're gonna get a lot more Wutai. We're gonna get more Wutai than I think anybody was expecting because Wutai is effectively, um, a, like a tourist destination even in the old game there's really not a lot that it has in relevance to the story at all in og ff7 now they are they, they set up wutai to be a massive massive thing and that's that starts even in remake part one where it's like wutai's got a lot more involvement in this game this is interesting now they're heavily involved and going to be a, a massive plot point in part two or i'm sorry jesus Part three. Episode intermission and her interactions with all the people in Midgar and her experiences. She was able to open her worldview a little more and start to be more accepting of the people around her and really learn and mature through that. Who are you? Vincent Valentine. I'm... Security. <laughs> Vincent Valentine represents a vestige of the dark history of Shinra and its extremely dangerous business interests. He represents kind of the surviving shadow of the people that were trounced by Shinra's initiatives and ideals. He represents the history of what got the company to where it is now, coming back to haunt it. I'm thankfully very familiar with Final Fantasy VII. I remember auditioning for it and wanting very, very badly to get this role. I had dreams back when I started out as a voice actor about one day having an opportunity to read for this game, if it ever came to pass for the many years that everyone was waiting for the remake to possibly be a thing. I had assumed it was gone. I assumed that it would, uh, it was just one of those that got away. Some of the people in the production knew how much this meant to me and they got me in to do some more background voices on Rebirth. I was like, hey, well, at least I get to be a part of this one too come into the session, they're like, we're gonna go ahead and put up a little camera. So she gets her facial motion capture reference. I'm like, okay, I will never let any of you see that video. <laughs> I'll try to find it, guys. I got you. <laughs> I think my fondest memory uh, working on this game was when I realized who I was playing. You know what we're doing here? I know the game. So we've got you playing some uh, NPC characters and a variety of different stuff. And uh, you know, it's pretty much just like you've done before. We'll play it. Oh, no. While. You just come in, just give me like two or three in a row. They brought me in to record background voices, just a couple of random people in Nibelheim or whatever, and partway into the session, the screen began to glitch out. That's weird. Doing something weird here. Hold on. And it led to this weird black screen display into text of, what if you, what if you were playing a different character? What the hell is this? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> so, uh, this is so funny. Session that I was actually there to record Vincent instead of these background characters. No. Are you f***ing serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm not going to lie. Uh, that that's, that's f***ing means a lot to me. And it kind of broke me in a beautiful way. I think that's going to be a particular memory I carry with me for a very, very long time. Thank you for choosing Bronco Cruises. We sincerely hope you enjoyed your trip with us. I'm most excited for the fans to just continue experiencing this story. We're not relegated to Midgar anymore, and so uh, you get to see so many cities and so many locations, and there's side quests, there's mini games. I'm excited for everyone to be able to 
uh, hop on a chocobo and then sit for part three how far they can ride and be surprised by how much more alive this world is in comparison to how we remember it i want to see their reactions to barrett's story i'm excited for that I mean, i'm really excited for that i'm most excited for people to discover the sides of zach that they haven't seen yet before it's like the whole gang is together the characters get to let loose and have a little bit of fun. It's really nice to get some lighter adventure and get to see these characters in more of a playful... Yeah, Sephiroth, Kate, and Sid are missing atmosphere. a... That was exciting for me, and I hope for the fans. <laughs> and there it was, the first step on our new journey. Are you coming? Yeah. Of course we are. Damn, is that it? Right. Crap, is that it? Is that the end, 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 end? Oh man, it is. There needs to be more. Damn, dude. You know, getting getting just some like insight from behind the scenes, much less from, you know, Japanese devs. And also, uh, you know, how insane the English voice cast is. That, that was really good.